When it comes to Chinese real estate, that word real is doing quite a bit of heavy lifting. The problem? China's real estate market looked at the 2008 collapse and said, hold my baijiu. Now this is one of the cases of, well the arrows are all going in the right direction and there's no way that's ever going to change. Why don't I just park all of my money into riskier and riskier investments? Let those forever profits just wash over me. Now at this problem's core there are three main characters. You got the buyers, the developers, and the government. Let's start with the buyers. I saw housing prices go up in a booming real estate market and thought, I should really get in on the action. Things are going well, banks are starting to loan people more and more money to buy houses, and all the arrows are pointing in the right direction. Wait, there aren't enough homes being built in places where people want them? Well, I guess we need developers to come in and build a whole lot more buildings fast. Now this whole supply and demand tango worked for a few years, but then property types started getting listed. A new type of property. The theoretical type. Developers started selling condos before they were even built. On a scale of home ownership to buying land in the metaverse, I'm giving this sort of a thing a buying property on the moon. All of the arrows at this point were still going in the right direction though and developers were making a ton of money. To most people it looked like these things were as good as built. Then as you have probably guessed, the arrows started pointing in the wrong direction. All these pre-sold buildings stopped being built. That condo with a half bath abruptly took on a new meaning. Now this placed Chinese home buyers in a particularly undesirable position to be in. They don't have the promised property and they don't have the money they borrowed. Instead they're just sort of making mortgage payments to the bank to maintain their ownership of a theoretical property. Enter the mortgage boycott. Oh no, are you going to foreclose on my non-existent property? No, no, don't take nothing away from me. Now these boycotts have spread across China as people have begun to realize that they have nothing to lose in this relationship. Now of course when you boycott something, you have a motivation beyond just, I don't want to pay anymore. That would just be defaulting, plain and simple. With a boycott, you're withholding payment until a specific thing happens. Now in this case Chinese borrowers are trying to leverage about a quarter of a trillion dollars in exchange for more loans to developers so that they can finish these projects that people bought before they were built. If you wrap up the construction then you'll have something to take away from me and I'll have a reason to keep paying you. The system works. Now this brings us to the second player in this tango, the developers. All of a sudden these people are looking like a much worse investment for banks and individuals looking to buy homes. Their story starts right after the 2008 collapse. Now while America was being relatively stingy with our stimulus, China went all out, cash everywhere. You got an idea? There's a government official with a blank check and your name on it. The government wanted people to create and build, so they backed full dump trucks of money up to the banks with instructions that said, hey, if someone has an idea that needs funding, do it. Gonna send several of these growth numbers all the way to the moon. Now while all that was happening, local governments across China were in a head-to-head -head competition to see who could juice the regional numbers to the biggest growth numbers. The guys who won that competition would leave their regional governments to get the big boy seats in the central committee table. And of course dump the how are we going to pay for it problem onto the unlucky sap who succeeded them. Now the cheapest way to get money and boost all the growth numbers was massive development projects. The stars in this case were perfectly aligned for some of the most wasteful development projects out there. The name of the game was Ghost Cities and they started popping up in the middle of nowhere because 
why not? It's really, really cheap to build on land that nobody lives in. The local government officials are pre-approving and securing financing for these projects and then not sticking around to see them come to fruition. And all the little numbers from this, they're all going up. Just look at all these construction and material production jobs that these things are creating. Now because we got a billion people, eventually someone's probably going to wander out here and settle down. Now here's the rub. Turns out, if you build it, they might not come. It's been a few years now and while people are definitely starting to populate these easy bake cities, it's not at a rate that makes them profitable to manage. In the late 2010s, these massive projects were just beginning to transition in corporate books from an asset to a liability. Wait, we have to pay how much to maintain this property? And uh, how much are we taking in in rent from that property? Oy, that's gonna be a problem. Now for a while there, this actually wasn't the biggest of deals. Money was cheap and the incentives were all aligned. The problem was, in 2018, Xi Jinping started to look at the government books and realized, oh, oh wait, we're spending how much money supporting these weird failing ventures? We gotta tighten up this ship a little bit. Now the new name of the game on the street was responsible lending, and that was going to be a problem for everyone. With these ghost cities sucking up huge amounts of cash from the developers books, Maintaining these investments was starting to look less and less feasible, or less and less desirable. The problem was though, hey these are really nice empty cities we got here, and they could be huge cash cows if people would just move there and start paying rents. Imagine for example if you owned all the buildings in Las Vegas, you'd be beyond rich. That was the dream here. In this fiscal tightening period, a whole bunch of ghost buildings started falling victim to responsible decision making. It was simply cheaper to destroy them than maintain them and wait for people to maybe move in. It was also during this period of financial stuck that CEOs started to ask themselves a question. Now that banks aren't spewing out money like they used to, how are we going to fund the projects that actually make us money? You know, those residential buildings in places that people actually want to live in. Well, we could take out more expensive loans from the bank to build them, or we could just pre-sell the buildings and all the condos in them and make those developments self-financing. A whole bunch of people wanted to buy houses, just not where the houses were. Now because of this financial responsibility hadn't fully impacted the economy yet, the arrows still point him firmly up. And you can always bet on real estate. I mean heck, they're building a fake Paris in the middle of the desert. Of course my neighborhood duplex is going to get finished. Then you started hearing about Evergrande, one of Charna's largest developers, defaulting on some of their loans and things quickly hit the real estate bubble fan. All of a sudden you've got these really expensive debts, you've got huge development projects not bringing in money and having to pay a lot of money to maintain them, and a whole bunch of these pre-sold buildings deteriorating in city centers. Basically, developers needed a whole bunch of money they didn't have in order to just keep up. Now this brings us to our final player in the tango, the government. Now as I previously mentioned, in a post-2008 world, China was just going on an all out spending spree, spending all the money they could get their hands on, and most of that money was going into the pockets of real estate developers. Well, that was really, really effectively juicing the numbers. A long term slowdown in property construction, an industry that represents around a quarter of China's economy, would cause a significant decline in GDP growth and commodity demand. Now, while America has a sort of military industrial complex, China has quite the building crap in the middle of nowhere industrial complex. 
Forget infrastructure week, over there it's infrastructure decade. Less buildings means less growth, and that's definitely not something that Xi Jinping wants to see popping up on his radar right now. Now this puts their federal government in quite the strange pickle. You see, their desire for fiscal responsibility got them into this problem in the first place. And now, are they all of a sudden going to play the UNO reverse guard on their policy and start turning on the cash spigot again? Well, China's initial response was, eh, forget those developers. They borrowed a whole bunch of money and can't pay it back. Sounds like a job for, uh, not the government. We have spent 10 years trying to support these unprofitable ventures. It's time to stop. Then something happened. Mobs of angry citizens refusing to pay a quarter of a trillion dollars back to the banks unless those banks financed the completion of the condos that they pre-purchased. Now that level of organized and motivated angry citizenry set off the check policy alarm on President Xi's dashboard. You know, maybe those developers need to stick around for a few more years. First thing China did was announce an emergency bailout specifically targeting abandoned projects financed by pre-selling condos. That's right, you protesters can now go home. The second thing they did was, maybe not fully back up a fresh dump truck of money to the banks, but certainly bring a topped off wheelbarrow of cash. While the rest of the world is starting to bump up interest rates in order to fight inflation, China just completely reversed their interest rate bump up course and turned back to cheap loans and stimulation again. If you need money to maintain your projects while you wait for people to maybe eventually move in, or keep growing our economy by just building a bunch of new random stuff. It all just got a lot cheaper. Hey, maybe you could build a bullet train to connect your many abandoned cities. That sounds fun. Now, unfortunately, this seems to sort of be like the guy trying to keep the party going after someone just broke their arm on the dance floor. Come on, banks, let's keep lending money over here just like you used to. Pfft, ignore all the almost defaults that happened a few months ago. Things are going great. Hey, hey, take a little bit of money and give it to someone, please. Banks are flush with cash, but are either unwilling or finding it difficult to finance projects. Credit demand weakened sharply in July, prompting some economists to warn of a liquidity trap in China, where low interest rates fail to spur lending in the economy. So that's sort of the latest from the Chinese real estate crisis. As things continue to heat up, or in this case, cool down, I'll keep you guys updated. Until then, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw and subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.